Hey everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Retro Ranger, where you're going to see a direct comparison about Retro Game Treasure and Video Games Monthly to help you make the choice of which sis or which subscription box you would want to buy. I do have a bias. You'll find out at the end after we go through the boxes. Let's see what's in the box. Hello everyone and welcome again to another episode of the Retro Ranger here on the Idle Hands Network. <clears throat> Today we have some great news in the retro gaming industry. The Super Nintendo Classic has been announced by Nintendo, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, there's plenty of other information out there, I just found out about it myself, but hey, that's neither here nor there. This is a direct comparison between two video game subscription services, Retro Game Treasure and Video Games Monthly. A little bit about each of these services. Both of them are a monthly service. Both of them do give you video games at about the same price. A um, couple of pros and cons of each of them. The ability to use Retro Game Treasure's uh, super easy interface, like, amazing. You just start typing and the game pops up, you click it, and it's in your list. You don't have to go down, like, search a big screen in order to get, to find your game. Especially when you're looking at, like, PlayStation or something like that, where there's, like, 700 games to choose from. Um, same thing with the Nintendo, there's, like, th or PlayStation, thousands of games to choose from. But with Video Games Monthly, there's a checkbox, and it's just a big list of games, so you have to check there. So um, The wish list is a little bit easier to use with Retro Game Treasure. Um, all you have to do is go to the wish list feature and just start typing in a game, and it's on your wish list. Um, with the wish list for the Video Games Monthly, you get or you essentially send them an email with a bunch of games that you want, and the bigger the list, the better, because then they can make sure that, A, you get games, but they can also, by that list of games, tell what kind of games you are into. That brings me to the second feature, the other feature on the, uh, the list. When you sign up for Retro Games Treasure, uh, you fill out what genres you're particularly into, and then they send you games in those genres-ish. <clears throat> with a very loose definition of those genres, obviously. Um, so, for about the same price, Retro Game Treasures comes in a pretty sweet box. Video Games Monthly. A very nice box, but... Mm, not as cool, in my opinion, but what does that matter? Really, it doesn't. So, <clears throat> down to the nitty-gritty, what you pay for and what you get. Retro Games Treasure, or Retro Game Treasure, has multiple different amounts of boxes you can get. So you can purchase an entire year's worth of a subscription and get a discount on the box. Whereas, but you paid for it in a lump sum. All in a lump sum. Um, you get three to five games, depending on their value. <clears throat> and then comes to you on the 20th-ish of a month. Somewhere around there. Um, video games monthly, um, you pay... For a three box, a three game box, a four game box, a five game box, six game box, and I think a ten game box per month, and it's a set fee. Both of them that I have, I have the four game box for video games monthly because I figured it would be probably the best comparison. 
because I'll never end up with less than four. But I could always end up with three here in Retro Games Treasure. So this time around, um, I have received three video games monthly boxes. Only one of them has ever been less than five games. My first box was actually six games. My second box was five games. So they have no problem sending me more games depending on the value of those games. Retro Games Treasure, uh, this is my second box from them, and they sent me three the first time. And <clears throat> uh, four this time. They sent me four on this one, so I think it's kind of the easy, evenest way to look at it as far as value is concerned, because this is what I paid for exactly. This is in the range of what I paid for. Games are exactly, like, they're four games each. Uh, I think there is two Nintendo games, a Nintendo 3, a N a Nintendo 64 game, and a PlayStation game in both. If not, it's two PlayStation games, one and one here. So, without further ado. We're going to start right off the bat with the Nintendo games, because as we know, that is what I am most into collecting. So, pulling out of each, we have our retro game treasure of Batman by Sunsoft. This is a pretty solid game. Um... Not the highest in value, but still a good, solid game. Do enjoy this game. Had it as a kid. Don't know where it went. Uh, with my Nintendo uh, system and everything that we had with it, which wasn't really a whole lot, I have a hell of a lot more now that I am an adult um, as a collector than I did as a child. Um, so, Batman, uh, great game, but not the most expensive. I think it's about eight or nine bucks in value. <clears throat> So, from, and that was from Retro Game Treasure. Retro Game Treasure gave me Batman. We have Solstice from Video Games Monthly. Direct comparison. Uh, the Quest of the Staff of Demons. Pretty sure this isn't a very exciting game, or it's not necessarily not an exciting game. I'm sure it did have some following. Uh, I don't know much about it. Um, this wasn't the type of game that we had when I was growing up. So I never got a chance to play it yet, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Because um, it looks like a very, similar to a Final Fantasy type game, in which case, sweet, Final Fantasy games. All right. <clears throat> so, continuing on with our direct comparison, I was correct, it was two Nintendo games each, and then one uh, PS1 game and one N64 game. So we have, from Retro Games Treasure, Hogan's Alley. Not a bad game, uh, a fun game. Looks like it may have been chewed on by a Pomeranian on the corners, maybe, or a cat. But it still works. Some interesting cosmetic damage, but that's pretty much it. But yeah, Hog Hogan's Alley, uh, one of the light gun games. Um, one of the black black box games, but I haven't received anything um, other than a PlayStation game that's complete uh, from Retro Games Retro Game Treader. Now they're from Video Games Monthly, but still a fun game, uh, like gun game. Can't play that on your regular TV or on your new TVs. You have to use your CRT um, old school TVs, which any retro gamer should have. I have one in my back closet. I don't have it out. There is going to be a cabinet made for it uh, one of these days that I'm going to make uh, with my Nintendo Advantage controllers in it. So it's going to be a pretty pretty cool setup, I think. But uh, that's uh, for future 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 reference. Going on from Video Games Monthly, we have Town and Country Surf Designs. Never played this game. I heard the surfing part was horrible, but the skateboarding part is a lot of fun. Still a fun game in general. Uh, very interesting game. Relatively inexpensive, but still still a lot of fun. 
We're going to jump to our PlayStation games. PlayStation games that we got out of each of these boxes. With <clears throat> Retro Game Treasure, I got Andretti Racing. This game is worthless to me. I don't like realistic racing games, and that was not one of the genres that I picked. Uh, kart racing games I picked, but that one I did not. Um, not too excited about that one. That one has absolutely no value at all. I probably would get maybe 30 cents for it at a game store in order to, like, do nothing with. Um, <clears throat> so, and then we got from Video Games Monthly, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Probably got this one because it's very similar to uh, Siphon Filter in the fact that I wanted I want Siphon Filter because I love that game growing up and the original Siphon Filter was a lot of fun. Siphon Filter Two um, was good too, but it wasn't as good. One of my favorite uh, levels in Siphon Filter was the sneaky level where you couldn't let anyone uh, catch you, and if you did, you failed the level. But you take a taser and you can start people on fire. That was always fun. Uh, going, continuing on, continuing on, we have our N64 games, um, from Retro Game Treasure, we have Star Wars Shadow of an Empire, uh, isn't too bad, it's actually got some fun levels in it, um, but again, not that expensive, if you're looking at value of these games, I would say probably maybe 20 bucks total. Andretti Racing was probably a throwaway, I, I am not not too impressed with Retro Game Treasure. Um, but here's the one that was the kicker for me on Video Games Monthly, and this one pretty much solidified my choice and why I was going to stay with Video Games Monthly as opposed to getting both, or just going with Retro Game Treasure. Diddy Kong Racing is one really fun game. Um, and it's worth the money to me. It's not overly ex overly expensive, but the fact that you can race in three different types of vehicles in most of those uh, levels, um, especially in the player level, um, or in the story mode, you can go through and get more stuff as you do it. But yeah, that one totally makes it worthwhile. I've been looking I've been looking for a kart racer for a while and I can't I don't have I didn't have any before. So Diddy Kong Racing, big, big deal. Uh, so that is all from the uh, Retro Game Treasure. There's no more, just some bubble wrap. Um, but uh, that's the, one of the things that you'll notice about the Video Games Monthly Box. Uh, they don't just send you games, they send you little things as well. Um, I've got uh, a bottle opener from them. Bottle opener. A... A koozie, and then um, I got a one-up card. They threw in a one-up card, and that one-up card is actually a cleaning uh, cartridge cleaning card. Um, I have a Nintendo Entertainment System cleaning cleaning kit right there, um, but this one is good for um, my N64 collection now. Um, so. <clears throat> Keeping up with uh, what I have in my collection, I still think that I have a pretty fun um, N64 collection. I am probably going to start putting together some PlayStation games that I've received uh, in order to maybe get something else. I've been looking for a couple others, but... <clears throat> so, yeah, so this is a pretty good deal there. That's just a random thing that they threw in there. Um, they send other stuff too, so like I got a koozie from them, I got a, um, a bottle opener, I got the one-up card, and then they also sent me a real, really fun card, or a really, something really fun, it was a Video Games Monthly, but it was, uh, a coupon code for the Key Armory, and that right there is probably something that I am going to get because those keys looked friggin' hilarious and great. Um, but you get a key that the the part where you turn, not the actual key itself, is designed like a sword from fantasy uh, culture. Something along the lines of the dire wolf sword from um, Game of Thrones. 
Sting from uh, Lord of the Rings, Thundercats, uh, The Legend of Zelda, uh, uh, Link's Sword from The Legend of Zelda. Lots of different choices. You have like 10 different choices, quite a few. Um, the Gunblade from Fi Final Fantasy VIII. A um, couple other really cool, really cool swords were, were your option there. So. so, yeah. If I had to give the grading scale to either one of them, Retro Game Treasure would get an A plus on the box because it is all sorts of loaded with fun things. Down at the bottom, you got treasure. So both of them have a uh, very good customer service. Um, I've dealt with both of them. Um, get back to you really quickly. Video games monthly. Um, just email them and they get back to you real quick. But if I had to give content wise, based on the five boxes altogether that I've received, I would say hands down, hands down, video games monthly have delivered good games consistently. Um, I've always gotten at least one good game and something fun out of it as well. So that one-up card is pretty cool. So That's my take. Um, I'm going to say go with the Video Games Monthly. Retro Game Treasure is really good too, but for the same price, there's a possibility I could end up with less games as opposed to $40 ending up with four games. That's including shipping, so they pay $5 in shipping for both boxes. Um so yeah, take take it as it is. Just remember, idle hands aren't doing anything.